These are the moments that I waited for my whole life About to get my shine, don't think I'm gon' need some more lights Been on my grind, that's why my future looks so bright Soon as that curtain go up, you know that it's my time It's my time, yeah Welcome back to the channel. Thank you to everyone that tuned into the last episode. I think the last one was me clickbaiting everyone to say I'm back with the thumbnail of my physique update and all that. And then I had a lot of messages saying, oh, you clickbaiting motherfucker. And I, it kind of was and it kind of wasn't. Like, I'm being completely transparent with anything I put out to the minute. And that is that I'm just finding my way here. And um, wherever it ends up, it ends up being. so. A few things have come into fruition since that episode. So I started dieting and getting back on plan from like the 2nd of January. I'm literally a New Year's resolution wanker. New Year, new me at the moment. Um, so I got back on plan 2nd of January. We're like a few weeks in now. And then as I was like getting more of the flow and the swing of things, me and Carl were talking. So I'm actually back on plan with Callum now. So he, he set my plan last week. Um, I haven't fully started it yet. Tomorrow is kind of like Monday, so it's gonna be the first like full week that I'm gonna be nailing it. Obviously food and that has been clean since the 2nd of January, but I've just been doing my own thing. And I've kind of been going by what he sent me last week for the last few days, but I have been traveling. If you follow the Instagram, I've literally just done three days on the road, living out the back of the car, um, staying in hotels, training when I can, etc. So I'm back home, very tired. Sara said, why are you filming today? Why don't you just sleep? I'm like, ah, I need to get shit done. Plus I've been away, so training's been a little bit juggled all over the place really. Um, but anyway, Delivery from HR Labs last week, which I needed to get done. Uh, Magic15 from hr-labs.co.uk. So Liam just kind of, <laughs> it's funny with Liam, I don't get like a spend with him. He says, what do you want? And I'll send it out. And that could happen every week or every two weeks or every month, whatever, depending on how quick me or the missus uses a pre-worker because she's into them as well now. But he's sent me um, some new bits. So I've got Carb Up, which is the, the carb powder, my intra workout. So he sent me the peach flavor. I'll be honest, I'm transparent. I fucking hate peach, but that's the flavor he sent me. So that's the flavor I'm gonna use. But when I pair that with, the EAAs, which is cherry bubble gum, it actually tastes quite nice. It's like cherry peach bubble gum. So there's a new flavor, Liam, if you want one. So that's my, um, I've had another tub of no code somewhere. It must be my office. So no code, which is the EAAs V2. And then another supplement that I've started using within my intra is Level Up. Um, this is basically like a recovery product and obviously I'm no young pup anymore, so this is paramount. So I'm using this now within the, so basically the ingredients we've got, um, or the breakdown, is pre, intra, and post work workout, this can be taken. So, uh, what's he saying? We'll speed this up. The gateway to gains, a rapid recovery, and ultimate progression in your chosen sport. So I think I guess this can be used for all sports as well, if you're not in the bodybuilding realm. And then uh, the old faithfuls, <coughs> Dfib, V3. We got Ice Blue Slush, Fizzy Candy Crush, and Lemon Fizz Bomb, which. 21 grams is like a full serving. I normally just do two scoops, which ends up being about 28 grams. And we've got the pump product, which is right on. Blow up is the pump powder pre-workout, uh, non-stim, no caffeine. That is gonna be released probably within the next two to four weeks in Feb. So there we go.
the Beautiful Struggle podcast with Meg Sylvester Chellin. I cannot forget to put that in because Google will kick my ass. The, uh, the podcast dropped this morning at 8 a.m. It's now 9.30. Let's have a little gander to see how it's doing. Um, for those of you that are following the Beautiful Struggle podcast, I do appreciate it massively. Um, it's it's obviously a bit of a graft because with the, the podcast, I'll just put that plane in the background. With um, the podcast, it is a bit of a graft because I do get a fin- financial contribution from Heavy Duty because they sponsor it. But, you know, that kind of covers the time and stuff and obviously, you know, promoting them through it. But the traveling that I'm doing on top of my existing work schedule. So, um, you know, I do appreciate when people are sharing and and commenting and that. It just kind of makes it worthwhile. So this one was filmed like uh, Friday night in Rotherham. I'd been up in Manchester for three days, trekked over to Rotherham, which was an hour and a half, did the podcast and then went an hour and a half back to Manchester for my shoot the next day there. So that's kind of how I'm doing it. When I'm up in a certain region, I'll touch base with an athlete or a person that I want on, see if they're free and then get them on the podcast. So uh, we dropped it this morning, 8 a.m. So hopefully that should do pretty good. There's gonna be, there's a lot of takeaways and good golden nuggets in this one from Meg. Um, so yeah, if you haven't checked out the Beautiful Struggle podcast, check that out. Also, one more thing, whilst I've been away this week, I have had the privilege of meeting Mr. Ed Connors. This is his new book, and uh, the foreword by John Cena, the wrestler. He's tight with John Cena. He actually got John Cena his contract, and he actually got Derek Lunsford his contract as well. So he's um, he's an icon in bodybuilding, going back to like the seventies, maybe before, like really when it all started and he helped take bodybuilding to where it's at now um, and he's still involved in it massively so this is his new book the three muscle tears and um, he signed it give me a little shout out in there and uh, he was like jay you look familiar i was like mate you definitely don't know me from my bodybuilding but he uh, asked for my instagram so i showed him it and then he came across my pictures from stage and he actually complimented me on it so if that's not enough to light the fire under your, under your ass, I don't know what it is. So, it's going to food down me. Touchdown at Planet Fitness Tridiga. Excuse the backdrop. The gym is having a lot of work done at the minute. And if you do train here, please like be appreciative of the work he's putting in. Because uh, I think this wall is coming down shortly. This whole back room is being extended into the uh, combat room. Combat room is going up there to another room, I think. So yeah, there's a lot of work going on here, which will all be done by the time the event is happening, Saturday night of March. Anyway. Enough about that. We're in for back pull. I'm back on plan with Carl, as I said, so I'm literally falling back into his training plan from today. Um, He knows that I've been attacking certain movements the last few months. Barbell squats, dumbbell presses, deadlifts, etc. They're going to continue. I'm just going to kind of rotate those around his session. So we're in for a full-on pull day today. Full-on pull day. Um, So I'm going to take you through it. I've had like this, this injury the last five or six weeks now, I think, in my trap. And I did it deadlifting. So I give it a little bit of rest. I've had a lot of treatment done. And I went back in and did RDLs Friday for the first time in a little while, and it's gone again. So one thing that I'm doing to, to start my pull sessions is really kind of like stretch everything out. So I just do some like dead hanging raises just to stretch all my lats out before I go into any of the work. Just to mobilize these joints, because as I said earlier, I'm no spring chicken anymore. So we need to get limber before we start lifting some heavy shit. Pride. There's nowhere to hide. What would you decide? 
when it's on the line Would you do or die? Would you compromise? Or would you stand through the storm and roll with the tide? Would you be the one to fight or the one to hide? You can never touch the sky if you don't try to fly Rocky Rose, but we stayed unshakable Been through it all and we're still unbreakable Size numero uno of the plan is chest for the T bar row. I'm not a massive fan of this T bar row, if I'm honest, just because the chest pad is like fucking doing a T bar row off an ironing board. It's solid, so I put this. Uh, mat folded up over the top just to like soften up the pad a little bit call me a pussy call it call it a pussy pad if you want i'm not i'm not too bothered but it does help me get the most out of this so this is the first movement two sets i've warmed up plate by plate by plate don't neglect your warm-up sets especially this time of year it's freezing and um, the last thing you want to do is tear something up just by rushing the sessions you know, i see people whipping in and whipping out of the gym um, even clients I understand everyone's got time restraints, but when you've got like gyms that are 24 hours, there's no excuses. Get in there a little bit early. Like when I'm like flying through sessions, I could probably get one done in about hour 20, and I'm seeing people finish their sessions sub 50, 50 minutes. So you know that either tells me that they're not warming up enough for the exercises, or they're not taking their sets when they need to take them whichever one of those they may be. But um, yeah, don't neglect your warm-ups. Make sure you're warm enough for your sets. And also make sure you're not just whipping through the sessions to get in and out, because uh, it is going to limit your progression. feeling it so second exercise extreme row this has been in my rotation to be fair um, Carl's got me doing neutral grip so it's like mid back by us and uh, we're loading at the top because we've already fatigued in the shortened range um, contraction so obviously doing the the t-bar row which is gonna like fatigue you massively so that's why we load it at the top here fed up of seeing people bragging about the fact that they loaded down the bottom when there's nothing to show for it really. This is used by the biggest fucking boys on the planet. So stop bragging about shit when you haven't got nothing to back up your bullshit. There's a reason we load a year. It's because we're fatigued from that and we can get more out of the movement in that range. So uh, we've got five on here at the minute. I'm gonna touch this for one and then I'll probably have to load it a little bit more then mid just to put a bit more weight on. We'll take no. We don't smoke, we don't go. Take it low, we are in control. Put our mouth in the Hustle's all I know. We be on it. Really, we be on it, working hard, cause my opponents, I won't let them get a moment. I ain't flexing, I ain't bragging, I ain't boasting. But when it come to greatness, man, I swear that we the closest. All, all it took was hard work. Life give you a hand, better make them cars work. Uh, now we pressing buttons just to make the cars work. Uh, took a little time, but it paid off. Thankful, could either be a boss or being laid off. Swallow your pride, there's nowhere to hide. What would you decide when it's on the line? If it's do or die? 
Would you compromise or would you stand through the storm and roll with the tide? Would you be the one to fight or the one to hide? Times like this, I think we needed collaborate, uh, collaborated, calibrated plates. Because really, I should take some of these off and put 25s on. But I'm just going to load in mid with another fucking 20 and be done with it. as well if you've seen me putting them in just so you're not like overextending at the bottom just gives you a little bit of help off the first one so you're not going to injure yourself that's the reason we do this some people do it because it's trending on instagram as well but that's the reason we do it heavy saw no trap though so happy days <sighs> heavy obviously this is we're not going to come to stretching but I'm sure that added something to it but third main exercise in single arm pull down the uh, infamous single arm pull down A little tip for you which I've picked up off Oscar probably more than anyone is uh, the power of counter force and what I mean by that is like if you look at any machine in the gym, you're more than likely to see a pad on it where you need to place uh, your arm, your like a limb basically. That pad's there for a reason, obviously for support for the movement. But if you think of like pressing against whatever pad it is, it's going to create counter force for whatever movement you're doing. So, for instance, a bicep curl on a preacher curl, push down against the pad with your tricep as you're lifting up, push down 
it's going to contract your bicep more. A leg extension, there's a pad on your shins. Push against that, it's going to contract your, your quad. But this pad here, your knee support, it's not just to hold you in place, but when it gets to like a heavy set, push against the pad. Because obviously you're pulling down with your arm and you're pushing up your knee, that count of force. So one's going in the other direction. It's going to help you lift those heavier movements. So that's a massive hot take that is, which I picked up probably two years ago from Oscar. Um, and we've seen all his back development. So take it as you will. So if you see the setup of the, the session, you're getting your heavy compounds done first. Obviously like the thickness, like you know, obviously your upper back, your erectors and all that are getting hit with all the compound shit. And then you're isolating stuff. 
The good thing about that is by this point, you've done your compound, so your back is fatigued. So when you're isolating even more by going single arm, single arm, single arm, your muscle, your lat, is going to be fatigued from obviously all the lifting you've already done. So it's going to be working twice as hard effectively to lift the weight. So uh, yeah, it's good to bring in the isolation stuff later on in the session. Um, obviously, you know, the start, you can do the isolation stuff to, to warm the muscle up prior to compounds. A lot of people do it that way. I've done it that way in my past. Whatever works for you, but this is, uh, this is the way I found definitely works best for myself anyway getting all the heavy shit done first which obviously you would have seen like the deadlifts and all that and the barbell rows so now we're on to the isolation which is still relatively heavy we've got six plates we can't fit any more on it but to be fair you can load this sucker up so top set single arm and hopefully the trap will not be anywhere near the uh, the exercise Heavy saw, but they fucking all heavy. supported fly on the prime we've loaded in middle and top just because we've not really hit that upper portion of the read out yet so um, obviously this you can use this as a multitude of rows multitude is a big word um, read out wise you just want to be flaring at the top put the seat down as low as you can in terms of like how your torso is made up I like this so my chin is kind of just on this Clear elbows. You don't need to be up here doing them. You're gonna fuck something up, but uh, as long as they like flare there, because obviously the lower you are, lower lat. Who gives a fuck about it? But it'll hit your lat, mid lat, higher you are for your delts. So hopefully that gives you a little breakdown. Bad idea going straight into this talk after the fucking set. I'm puffing you. 
Did we get in there. Yeah, I'm Sports Illustrated. The world's renowned. I'm the crowd's favorite. It's always my time. I'm never outdated. The great hope. Yeah, I'm full of greatness. Who gon' stop my rise? They can't stop it. I'm the man of the year. I'm the hot topic. I'm running the game. And they can't knock it. I'm going for gold. Ain't no other Sacrifice with blood and sweat. I stuck to my core with every rep. I carry my weight with every step. Stood the test of time and passed every test. Wear my heart on my sleeve until the goals on my chest. No competition, I fear there's nothing better. I'm ready, anybody, anywhere, whenever. to the small gun show. Biceps to uh, end off the pole session. It's back and bite, isn't it? Let's, let's be honest, it's fucking back and bite. So we've got, um, again, isolation stuff, single arm preacher, dumbbell curl, and then uh, I believe there's a cable uh, rope hammer, which is nice. Love a hammer curl. So we're just doing single arm. This is the third set now, so we've dropped down a little bit because the, the reps started dropping off. So two sets of, um, I think I got 12 reps with 15s. Doesn't fucking matter, but uh, 12 reps with 15s, 10 reps with 15s, and now we're going 12 and a half, and just to see what we get. that counteracting forcing where I said about the pad again tricep against the pad and then I'm also using this arm that's not working to push against the preacher bench so you're creating that um, counteraction from the other side as well so push and pull push and pull
So some uh, low setup, raw hammer curls to finish. This was supposed to be single arm, but we pushed for time, so we just blasted it out and do well. That is back and bite, essentially. Um, hope there was a couple of takeaways in there from you, from this session for you. It's, uh, it's not just about putting content out to make you look cool. I think uh, some of these people see us filming in the gyms or whatever and think, oh yeah, they just wanna give it a big one on social media, but it's not about that. It's about like documenting what I'm doing. There's gonna be a lot of guys that can take something away from it. I do get like, sounds fucking mad, big headed me saying this, but I do get a lot of like, people coming on to me on the road when I'm on shoots, saying like they're following my journey. And it's mad to, um, to think like how many, people take something away from that from me just doing my thing just check that's on um, yeah it's like people get invested in what you're about what you're doing where you're going obviously the podcast magic guy and uh, the last couple of weeks I've kind of it took someone saying it to me to actually make me step back and think about it a little bit. And then when I was at like the, the Train by JP gym opening, a lot of people were coming on to me that I obviously didn't know, but they follow my stuff and say they watch a podcast or they say they watch YouTube. Are you competing again? What's the plan? So yeah, it's crazy. And that, you know, that is partly why we document what we're doing because there's obviously people out there that are taking something away from me, whether it be motivation, whether it be tips, or whether it be just having a fucking laugh at uh, my accent, I'm not sure. So that's a wrap. I'm going to try and be a little bit more consistent with this now in terms of like my overall content output. Obviously, I've got a podcast going out on the Beautiful Struggle podcast channel, aiming to try to get up to a speed where I'm doing like one every other week. My own bodybuilding journey, whatever's going on there, put one every other week out of that as well. So like every week there'll be some piece of content dropping from either the Beautiful Struggle podcast or Jay Davis UK. And then obviously the daily update as per usual on Instagram. So that's it. Thank you, Sarah, for coming over and joining me on a Sunday. Thank you for watching. Like, comment, subscribe. Drop a comment. Let me know anything you'd like to see because I'm up to just filming anything. As long as it doesn't involve me dressing as a woman and putting lipstick on. We've done that one. We boxed that off. So I'll see you in the next episode. Peace.